In this video, I will present two examples of divergent series, and I will prove that they are divergent directly from the definition. In each example, the sequence of partial sums does not have a limit for a different reason. The two examples are simple. They are series that we know probably must be divergent, but I want to evaluate them directly from the definition. I want to see that our definition correctly identifies that they are divergent and agrees with our intuition. In a way, this is a test that the definition of series is a good one. The first example is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the constant term 1. What does this mean? Well, when n equals 1, I add 1. When n equals 2, I add 1. When n equals 3, I add 1. And so on, infinitely many times. And it's clear what is going to happen, right? Intuitively, this has to be infinity. It can't possibly be anything else. But I want to do it from the definition and make sure that the definition reaches the same conclusion. Otherwise, we have the wrong definition. So the definition of series or infinite sum says that the full sum should be the limit of partial sums. And the kth partial sum is defined as the same sum, but where the index stops at k. So what could this be? Well, this could be the sum of k terms, and all the terms are 1. So sk is simply k. This is probably the easiest uh, series calculation you will ever do. And therefore, the value of the full sum is the limit as k approaches infinity of sk, which is k. In other words, infinity. Yes, exactly what we expected. Good. Another way to say the same thing is that the original series is divergent. Because the limit of partial sums does not exist. My second example is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. Let's see what the first few terms look like. When n equals 0, I am adding minus 1 to the 0, which is 1. When n equals 1, I am adding minus 1 to the 1, which is minus 1. When n equals 2, I add 1. When n equals 3, I add minus 1. And then I keep going like that forever. And like before, I want to compute the value of this infinite sum strictly from the definition. So once again, the definition of series or infinite sum says that s should be the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth partial sum, where the kth partial sum is defined to be the very same sum, but when I stop, as the index reaches the value k. Right. Let's compute the first few partial sums to see what this looks like. Um, I will start in this case with 0, not with 1. So at 0 will be the sum when I stop at 0. So it's just the 0th term, 1. S1 will be the sum when I stop at 1. So it's the 0th term plus the first term, which is minus 1. So it's 0. S2 is the 0th term plus the first term plus the second term. So 1 again. S3 is the 0th term plus the first term plus the second term plus the third term. In this case, it's 0. And we see what's happening, right? Depending where I stop, if it's after a minus 1 or a 1, they're all going to cancel and I'll get 0, or I'm going to get 1. Or more precisely, the formula for sk is that sk is 0 if k is odd, and 1 if k is even. So it's the sequence 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and so on. What's the limit for the sequence? There isn't one. Um, the limit as k approaches infinity of the sequence of partial sums does not exist. And it's not because it's infinity, it does not exist because it oscillates this way between 0 and 1. In other words, we say that the series is divergent. And divergent simply means that this series does not represent a number. It doesn't equal a number. 